Hi, David Charney here from eLearningLocker.com. Today I want to talk about a little project I put together using Storyline 360 dials and a little bit of JavaScript, and I was able to put together this cool little watch, which I put on my phone and taped to my arm for some reason. Because I'm 37 years old, and I can do what I want. But anyway, let's take a look at how it was made. Okay, so here's our, our finished clock. And I have to publish this to a browser. I can't view it in preview mode because JavaScript won't work. Um, you can see that it just hit uh, 60 seconds, and so the, the time uh, advanced one more minute. And uh, there's an hour hand, a minute hand, a second hand. Uh, I'll show you how that was built very shortly. Um, I built this fairly quickly, so I didn't put numbers on anything uh, if I was going to refine this a bit more. I'd probably put some numbers on here, some hours, just make it a little bit easier to uh, to view. So we were very close to 8 o'clock here, so I thought I'd let this uh, this second hand move around one last time. We're going to see that the, um, uh, the minute hand and the hour hand are going to advance uh, by one. So we'll see that in uh, just a few seconds here. I should add a a ticking sound to this. So there we just saw everything advanced by uh, uh, the minute hand advanced and the uh, hour hand advanced. And now that I think about it, a ticking sound would be very, very annoying. Uh, so I probably won't do that or I will make it an option. Um, so here's like Let's say we're calling out Big Ben. What's Big Ben? Oh, this is what Big Ben is. Well, you could have Big Ben off to the side, but it could have an accurate time on it, which is, uh, you know, a nice little touch. Another thing we could do is create a little bit of a training course with this. If uh, someone's trying to learn how to tell time, uh, and I would never do it this way, I would have numbers and things on this to, to help someone. But, you know, I can check the time. It doesn't mark as correct. I can adjust these, let's see, three minutes, and this is 21, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Check the time, and I didn't do anything fancy here, obviously, just a big blue box. Uh, that was my layer for correct. So uh, you can see, um, you know, to, to build a little challenge there, uh, you could do it the other way around too, where, um, I wonder if this will reset. Yes, good. Um, oh, and by the way, I, uh, I only run this once, unlike my first clock, because I, if, if this keeps updating every second, every minute, someone's going to be trying to constantly make little adjustments to this to check the time, and I think that's uh, slightly unfair. But, uh, you know, you could do this the other way, where we say, uh, we could say this is the time, and we lock the actual hands of the clock in a certain way, and um, we could have some blanks here. So someone has to say it is uh, 8, uh, 8.04 with 24 seconds. Uh, and another thing here too, and I didn't do that for this because, again, it was kind of a quick build. But um, what I would want to do is I would want to add a, a 0 in front of this 4. Um, and possibly a 0 in front of the 8. I don't know. But uh, anyway, you, you look to see how many digits it is, and you can add an extra 0 in front of it. So let's take a look at how this was built. So again, this is relatively simple. You'll see a lot of stuff here, but we'll just break it down a little bit. There are three dials on this. There is a second hand, an hour hand, and a, a minute hand. Those are very easy to create. Let's pretend this is the second hand. You can go to dial, convert to dial, drag this center point down, and then change the rotation to 360. And we would want this up here at the top. And now we've got, oh, I want to do one more thing here. I want the end value to be 60.
So now I've got 60 points all the way around. So you can see that's how quickly we could make a, a second hand, an hour hand, a minute hand. Um, now my hour hand is also 60 steps, and I'll explain that in just a second. But that's how quickly we can build that. Let me delete that. Um, that will create, every time you make a dial, it'll create a, a new variable. I have just a few variables in here. Um, I do have a couple extras in here, but really hour, minutes, and seconds. Those are my three main variables. And uh, then there's a layer for get time. Uh, and just so you can see here, I've got a motion path here. And the motion path takes a second. So what I do is I have a little trigger here, show layer, get time, when the animation completes of this object, which I've called control, for this motion path. So every second, every time this motion path ends, it will call this layer. I have in the past had a layer, and I've had that layer last a second. But over time, it seems that there's, it's just, it's like the slightest bit off of a second. So after a long time, it's no longer running every second. It's just slightly off of that. But this, this approach using um, motion paths, which is something uh, Nate's, who I have a podcast with, the e-learning guys, check it out. Uh, he had suggested this, and this seems to hold up very well. And if you're not familiar with JavaScript, uh, this can look a little confusing. Uh, it won't look uh, like uh, it makes any sense to you, but we can break it down briefly. And um, you can, if you do a search for JavaScript online, you'll find a lot of good information about this stuff. So I would recommend looking up uh, Storyline and JavaScript. It's going to explain uh, some of these things like um, get player, set var, which is how you tell storyline uh, what a, uh, that's how you set a variable in storyline. So I would look those things up. Um, these are JavaScript things, not really related to storyline, but this is how I get the uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So uh, there's a date function in JavaScript, and I'm just creating a variable s, m, and h for second, minute, hour. I'm going to populate it with the current second the current minute and the current hour. So if this is, if we're at 430, for instance, this is going to be 30, which is going to set the M to 30, which down here I'm going to set, I'm going to tell Storyline that my variable called minutes is this M, which is 30. And then if I've got this dial back here and it's got 60 steps, it's going to set the minute hand to 30, which means it's going to be pointed you know, straight down at the 6. JavaScript has a 24-hour clock, so what I have to do is I have to say, and, and this is one of my two little hurdles, you would think from here down, relatively simple. But because hours is a 24-hour clock, if the H, which is the hour, is over 12, so let's say it's 13, which is actually 1 o'clock, I want the H, I want the hour to equal whatever the hour is, minus 12. So if it's 13, I want to subtract 12, which is 1, which is the time. The other thing I ran into is that on a regular clock, when you know the hour hand is slowly moving the entire time. So if it's 5.59 and you look at the clock, usually, well, usually in, in I think all cases, the hour hand is relatively close to the six hour mark. Not, it doesn't sit on the five hour mark the entire time until you hit six o'clock. So I wanted the, uh, the hour hand to slowly move. So that's why I use 60 steps back here instead of uh, 12. So what I need to do is I need to figure out where the hour hand should be on a 60 step uh, dial. So this is the most complex uh, math in this project. Because I want the hour hand to move over time, I've broken it into two parts. One, in a 60-step dial, I need to know where my hour hand would be. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more onto that for the minute hand. 
uh, I want to know where my uh, where I should be on the dial, a 60-step dial, if it is, let's say, 6 o'clock. If it's 6 o'clock, I want 12 divided by 6. I know that that's going to be half of 60, which is the number of steps. So I know that if it's 6 o'clock, I'm going to be at frame, or sorry, step 30. But again, that doesn't move me right up until the uh, you know, if it's uh, 6.59, it's just about ready to be 7 o'clock. I want the hour hand to be the step right before uh, the 7 o'clock uh, step. So I'm going to add a little bit more on to the 30 uh, by taking the, by basically doing the same math. And this 5 is because there are 5 frames for every uh, every hour. By, based on whatever minute it is, uh, we can figure out uh, how many steps we need to move um, and uh, have five divided by how many steps we need to move. Uh, that will let us know that we are at, it'd be, I don't know what exactly it would be, it'd be like 4.48 steps more. So then what we want to do is we want to, we, we need a whole number. So we use MathFloor, which is JavaScript, for basically um, rounding down to the whole number. So that's going to put us at four frames. So that means we're going to be at 34 steps, which is one step before 7 o'clock. So it will, every time this runs, every second this runs, it will just keep adjusting all three dials. And once you do that, you can make this clock look any way you want. Here's my Big Ben slide, just a big image back here. I have a empty face plate here, and I just uh, I have the exact same thing here that I kind of miniaturize and put back on this clock, and it works exactly the same way. This game here, this uh, little game where you can set the the hands based off the time, uh, you know, that's a little bit more complex. So I think we'll uh, we'll revisit that at a at a later video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to get notification of when new videos come out. Check out eLearningLocker.com for templates and videos like this and articles and all things eLearning. If you're sick of looking at my face, you can listen to me at the Learning Guys podcast at theLearningGuys.com. Oh. oh, man. This was a bad idea.